mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is finished, but it's not over. It is finished, Christ said from the cross. Where's the banner? Over there, behind the pulpit. It is finished. On the cross, he said that. Christ said. God said. It is finished, but it's not over. We're still here. We're still in the same lives and the same struggles and the same kinds of challenges that man has faced since the beginning. We're a little more technical about things, but how we deal with it is still the same. Same types of attitudes, the same kind of selfishness, the same kind of all those bad stuff, you know. All those things that we know better. All the things that we have no clue. All those things that challenge us, all those things that it just, you know. Luther talked about as being that we were born into the barn of Satan. We were born into Satan's barn, and we have to pay the rent. What does that mean? Pay the rent. It means that because of Adam, Paul says, because of Adam, we are all sinners. Now, not the same sin necessarily that, that Adam did. Luther talked about being, you know, they were into that, it was an apple thing. We don't know what the fruit was. But uh, uh, he ate the apple in disobedience to God who said, don't eat that tree, the fruit of that tree. And Adam did it, and Eve, who led him in to do it, they both did it. And because of that, one, they only had one commandment, and they broke it. And because of that, they brought death into the world. And bringing death and decay and all the other kind of things. The Scripture talks about that, yeah, so our, our uh, uh, it's, it's new, uh, the, the echo, uh, the, uh, whatever, the people who are ecology and say that, that man is responsible for the disaster that is nature, they're biblically correct. They won't let you tell them that. Because what the Bible says is that we can't fix it. <laughs> See, and, and that's their objective, is to make you think that we can fix it, that we can regulate it. We can't even report on it, much less predict it. What did it say it was going to be today? Uh, you know, I was reading today, it goes from 47 to 30-something or other, and then it went back up to maybe at 48, 50-something. And did it go that way? <laughs> They're 50 50. Yeah, I love it. It says 50% chance of raining today. And either it is or it isn't. Right. Okay. They got it. They nailed it. Nature is broke because of sin. And we're not talking about our neighborhood, we're talking about all the universe is broken. Just as we are broken. It's because of Adam. And that's what Paul says, through one man, through one, see, he didn't say man and woman. <laughs> see, even though she started it. <laughs> but, you know, never mind. <laughs> I'll get into trouble from here. <laughs> All right. He was there, and he bought into it too. So he doesn't get off just because she was part of what led him into sin. And they had already sinned. Anyway, Adam, they'd already, because they were thinking that they could count equality with God something to be grasped. They wanted to know about evil when God was not going to give them that. But they thought it would happen. And he said, the devil had convinced them, God's just hiding stuff from you. God's keeping stuff from you. Have you heard those themes today? The church is just hiding stuff from you. The church is just keeping the truth from you. Have you heard that deceiving statements today? Yeah. Guess who's still around? Guess whose barn we live in? 
And guess how we pay the price? How we pay the rent of living in this corrupted world. <clears throat> all the stuff that you face in life, all the turmoil, all the despair, all the challenges, all the unknown, what are we going to do next? I'm going to take my glasses off because I'm learning how to win and wear them. <clears throat> all those things that challenge us and dealing with our infirmities, and dealing with our healings, and dealing with all that kind of stuff, yeah, that's because of sin, and we have to pay for those things. It's the consequences. And we suffer not only the consequences of our sins, but the consequences of others. And living in the devil's barn, the devil has free reign over us. He can butcher us. He can inflict us. He can cause us pain. He can do all sorts of stuff. But guess what? That doesn't. Matter. To us, if we recognize, as Paul said, through one man came death, through the second man, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, came life, eternal life. And it is finished. When Christ came, by one man came death, by one man came life. And how did that happen? Because that's the way God planned it. God had it all worked out. And through Ezekiel, did for the exercise sometimes, if you get bored with what I'm saying or during the, whatever, uh, during the offering, uh, take a pen or a pencil and take a look at Ezekiel and, and, and God's words there. Circle all the personal first person pronouns. I. Did did you did you recognize that when as, as he was reading it? I. What I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that. Is there anywhere it says what you're gonna do? Nope. Not a word. God does it all. There's nothing left for us to do. And and all that process was. He says, I'm going to send my servant David. David was dead. But the root of Jesse, the descendant of David, the Savior, next week we're going to start preparing for the celebration of his first coming. Okay. But today we say amen on his effect upon the world. Because he brought life to his sheep. Even in the midst of living in the devil's barn, we're living life. Because over half of it has already been given to us. Jesus is on his throne in heaven, and he is ruling. And he has given us, through his word and sacraments, through the word, through baptism, he has given us the gift of eternal life. He has given us forgiveness of sins. He has given us his Holy Spirit. We didn't do anything. We're, we are, Scripture says, we are dead in our, we are dead. We're born dying. We're born diseased. We're born terminal. We're born into the devil's barn and it doesn't get any better, worse better. Whatever. Christ has given it to us as a gift. And the effect is, is incredible because we, we can't do anything to make God love us any more than he already has. We can't Butter him up like he was a Santa Claus and he's coming and keeping track of what we're doing between now and then. Or the kids before their birthdays. You know. We can't butter God up. We can't give him stuff. He says, you know, what, what do you, you want to give him my own stuff? 
Oh, thank you very much. You know, I already own that <laughs> and everything else you have. I just loaned it to you. Okay. Did you realize that everything you have came from me, God says? I did that. I did this. I did that. I did, I did everything. The statement, the other statement that was going around, you know, you can't do it alone. You can't do it at all. God done it all. He did it everything for you. He's done it. It is finished. You can't add to it. You can't subtract from it. You're still dying, but you have life. And that life now, okay, see, Christ has given you the life. And, and, it's, it's, and, and we don't even recognize that most of the time. We don't. You heard what, what Jesus, how Jesus described Judgment Day. How he described when he comes back again and he has the sheep and the goats. The sheep are his sheep. The goats are not. <laughs> and, and he puts the, the sheep on his right and he puts the goats on the left and he says to the sheep, hey, let's go home, guys. Yeah. He says, boy, you did, you did all this stuff. You did what I told you. You did what, what God wants you to do. And he, he, he shows them. He says, when I was, you know, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me in prison and stuff. Like it's just, you know, on and on and all. It's a list of all this stuff, see? People think when I stand, oh, oh, when the judgment day comes, what am I going to do? I have, I, I have, I haven't been better than I've been bad. I, I haven't done good. But Jesus says, you did. And they said, when did we do that? He says, let me show you. He says, you don't remember? He says, look here. You see, when, when I was thirsty, you gave me something. You gave somebody to drink. When I was, you did this, you did that. And he says, really, that was you? That was my, it was my people, my sheep. There was people that needed you to be neighborly to them. And you helped them. And they said, wow. See, we don't, we're, we're not always going to know what we've done, how God has used us. See, that's what happens in baptism, is that God gives us the Holy Spirit, and he's the one that does the good works. Our good works are not what we have done. We're not good because of what we've done. It is God's goodness. It's God's righteousness. And he has made us righteous. And because he has made us good and righteous and perfect in his sight, then the good works that he does through us are good and right and perfect. All we can do is for our sinful nature mess it up. Foul it up. But okay. The other thing that happened is that, see, Jesus, it calls him the first fruits, the firstborn of those who are coming alive, coming to life again. By baptism, God, Christ has joined us to his baptism, and in joining us to his baptism, the Scripture says it joins us also to his death and resurrection, the death to sin. And so we are, we are now joined to Christ, and he is the first fruits the firstborn of life to be resurrected. And he talks about, it's, it's like, you know, in most of nature, of, of, of mammals, most mammals are born head first. That's a natural way for most of them. And when it talks about Jesus is the first fruits, the firstborn of the living, the head comes out first. And then the body and all of its parts. That's us. We're the body of Christ. We follow him from where we are now to where we're going to be. And that's not into death and destruction. That's not into decay any more than Christ was. Christ was immediately. He did not decay. 
our bodies, because of Adam, our bodies must die. Our bodies must die. Do you hear that? Our souls are with God. The scriptures talk about a sleep. And the sleep part is because we're going to be awake with God in heaven forever. The others are never going to wake up from that sleep. Yeah, they're going to, on the last day, they're going to wake up to the fact that, yes, this is Jesus the Messiah. They're going to wake up to, yes, they had a chance, but they didn't let the Holy Spirit come into their hearts. They didn't let the Holy Spirit use them as God's servant to those that need our help. They're going to wake up to eternal separation from God, whereas God's people will wake up. Those who have fallen asleep before that time, they're going to wake up, and God's going to say, hey, look, come on home, as sheep, because now, see that window right there, that throne? This is what he's talking about. God has already placed Jesus on the throne. I talk about God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We talk about Trinity, Son, and so forth. Okay, it's a mystery. We don't know how all this how it works out. There's been theologians who talk, talk from scriptures, but this, this is what he said. God placed him on the throne and subjected to him everything. He had already on the cross, it is finished, conquered what? Sin, death, and the power of the devil. The power of the devil. The power of the devil. The devil's still around. But Christ took all his power. The only power that the devil has today is the devil that is the power that you give him over you. And Christ says, You don't have to do that. I have, I'm in charge. I'm the ruler. Give me charge of your life. Give me the power over your life. That's what he's saying. Give it. Your life isn't yours in the first place. I purchased and won it. It's mine. I want it, and I want it to be with me forever. That's what he said. That's what he said. Christ is sitting on his throne now, and when he comes in glory with all the angels again, he is going to take everything and make it new again. He's going to get rid of all that's left, you know, the devil, all of his evil angels, all of his followers, He's going to get rid of this corrupted creation. He's going to get this one. He's going to get rid of all authority. He's going to get rid of kings, presidents, czars, princes. Get rid of governors. Get rid of county councilmen. Get rid of parents. Parents. Parents are authority. He's got all authority is gone. We'll all be kings. And he's going to be the king of kings, Lord of lords. We're the lords. We're the kings. I don't quibble about whether you're going to rather be a queen. No. Kings have always been more of a potentate power than the queens. Not that there haven't been some pretty powerful queens. Good and bad. But that's what it's just talking is that we are all, we get the top level, whatever that is. Doesn't matter. There's not going to be any. Okay. Don't worry about it. God's got that all figured out. It's all given to you as a gift. And you already have it. Christ is up there with it. You're, do you hear what Paul said? Your name was written in the book of life before God created all that was good. And then man was born and corrupted it. But it doesn't take your name out of the book of life. It's still there. You're in heaven. You're in heaven. You're, it's, it's a time thing. It's a time thing. What does it mean to be without time, without beginning, without end? Well, when do we get there? When it's your turn. <laughs> it's done. It's finished, but it's not over. In time, we still have to deal with it. In time, the same thing that brought you to Christ, 
However came the word and the sacraments, whether it was a sacrament of holy baptism and then the word grew as you grew up to understand stuff, or whether it was the word as an adult. It came to you and, said, and, the, and the gospel opened up to you and said, God wants to forgive you for your sins. Admit that you're a sinner and need forgiveness. Look at how God demands perfection of you, and you are not perfect as God demands of you. And you never will be. So ask God, please forgive me. And he says, I forgive you. In his stead and by his command, I did that at the beginning of the service. I speak to those of you who were not here to get that. You don't get that in any other denomination these days. Lutheran church, if they still do it. For someone to stay there and say, your sins are forgiven. If you have confessed them with a contract, you know, there's an if to it. You can read the words, but not have the heart behind them, and it's not coming to you. I can't beat you over the head with it cut up a slit and slide it in, doesn't work that way. It starts with where your heart is. That's what I'm talking about. It's all an attitude. It's all a concept of who you are and what your relationship is to God. You are a sinner. We are born into and living in Satan's barn. And he tries hard to hold on to his sheep and goats and every other creature. But Christ, the good shepherd, has sought us out, has made us his own forever. And we want to, you'll hear, you heard it at the beginning, we're going to close with it to the end of the day. It's a one big, great, and all God's people said, you don't know that litany? All the others are using it. What is it? And all God's people said, Amen. Let's hear that again. Amen. With that amen, see, I'm not finished. With that amen, it, I may be finished, but it ain't over. <laughs> With that amen, see, God gives us that peace, not only with God, but with ourselves. It helps us to live in Satan's barn because we become God's instruments receiving his love, to share his love with other people. And I don't care how much depression you've got. If your depression can be physical, so get a doctor to take a look at it. You know, we've learned that our body, because of sin, corrupts us and sends chemicals to mess up our mind. So, Get medical attention. And if that fixes it, thank God and live with the medication. Because it's not over yet. And through your struggles, you share God's love with others in your family, in our family, in our family of the world. Love others because Christ has loved you first. And the world cannot understand that. But it keeps us in him until he comes and separates his sheep and takes them home. And to that we can all again say, <laughs>